Mm. Okay, I got so it's recording. Perfect. Let's move everything out from my screen. I'm moving to the team meeting notes. Okay, for information, the I try to publish the meeting note on Community Jenkins, usually the Tuesday before, just just before starting the draft for the, the current day. Uh, otherwise, I will forget. Um, let me share the link on both IRC and here on the conversation. So in Zoom, here is the link to the collaborative notes and on IRC as well. Okay, we're on there. Everyone can hear me and see and read my screen clearly? Yes. Cool. yes. Thanks, so let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Uh, today we have uh, Mark, Hervé, Stéphane and hi Damien. Um, let's get started with announcements. So the only announcement I had on my draft notes is the fact that today's release, today's weekly release has been released successfully. So you can grab the version 2.337 of Jenkins. The Docker image is available. We should have our infra CI system uh, upgraded during the next, the upcoming hours. Are there other announcements or elements related to that release that should be worth discussing? So the Docker images must have become available within the last 45 minutes or so? I think so as well. Great, I've, I, okay. I haven't checked uh, before this 45. Okay, when, just when I attempted to mm -hmm. run them about 45 minutes ago, they weren't there. So I'll, I'll do the poll, thanks. Um, no announcement? Okay, so let's get started. If it's not available, it's because uh, I might have uh, concluded too quickly that it's available because of some pull request. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so I, I don't see it yet, but I will, I, I will continue running the release checklist. Most of the other items in the release checklist are successful. Okay. Um, let me so the change log is visible, for instance, and so there's just more to still to be done. Okay, I'm just added the notes related to the weekly release. I will explain later if we have time. Otherwise, it will be different. Okay, if it's okay for you, let's get started. So. First of all, big thanks, Sir uh, Stefan, for taking care of CI Jenkins IO major issue uh, earlier today, uh, where the Maven container agents weren't started at all. So we had a, a build queue that was with a bunch of jobs waiting to be processed. Uh, so I'm the root cause because yesterday, by solving other incidents, I upgraded all packages and all plugin of CI Jenkins IO and trigger a reboot. The weird part here is that the container were started and some bits were processed on both Kubernetes cluster. But this morning, uh, it seems like that no container was spawned at all. No error on the logs as the Stefan and Derve checked. So smells like a race condition somewhere. Um, they met a lot of uh, uh, stack error. By the way, Hervé, while I'm thinking, if you don't mind asynchronously to add the screenshot of uh, error stack, could you upload them to the help desk issue? Yeah. The, the, there wasn't any uh, sensitive data on this screenshot, so you can totally uh, go ahead. Um, most of these error stacks were related to classes, implementation classes missing, one time for EC2, one time for classes used on the init Groovy script. Uh, the common point where these classes were provided by plugins, as if some plugins weren't loaded correctly during the class loader uh, part. So that's really weird. Uh, sounds like the classic method of reboot it. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to reboot? After two reboots, CI Jenkins IO was okay. 
Um, the bill queue was processed quite quickly then. So thanks folks for fixing that issue really quickly. We might want to operate CI Jenkins IO first a reboot of the container, then a reboot of the VM to see if the problem happen again and if we can see any error log, if we can reproduce that issue. If it's a race condition that might be random, but yeah, there is still an area where we don't know and we cannot conclude, but it smells like uh, by upgrading all the plugins yesterday, that could have triggered that uh, indirectly. We cannot be sure. Um, the reason, at least the main reason was because yesterday we had a Puppetron failing for CI Jenkins IO. The issue was not on the Puppet agent of the machine, but on the fact that a Puppet agent asked the Puppet master to trigger some historical backup of the configuration files changed. Each time there is a change on the GitHub repository, the agent pulls the files from the code repository through the, master, the Puppet master. And if there is a change detected, Puppet's agent informs the Puppet master, which takes snapshots of this different version. So we can always roll back, even if we lose the GitHub, uh, the GitHub source. So there is a, we are limited by the space on the Puppet master, of course, and it's rotating. It's correctly, it should not use more than 10 gigabyte on that machine for, for that specific feature. So we don't, we won't fill the hard drive. But the, the snapshot backup failed on the Puppet master because the location where it was trying to backup was owned by root instead of the, uh, uh, the Puppet user. So I applied correctly the new sets. These files were uh, four years old. The, directory, the set of directories with the bad permissions. So I have no explanation why suddenly these directories were used, but it's a kind of, it was a kind of annuary, it was a bucket. Then there is a five level of subdirectory, each one name with a single letter. Seems like something they were trying, uh, I forgot the word name, like, uh, it's like a cache with a tree and I assume that we went on the bad part of the tree. So I recursively applied correctly the authorization and permissions and that fixed the issue. And it and audit each file have the same correct uh, permission and mask right now. Uh, everything has been uh, written on the issue. If it happens again, we should have to check that. Uh, but I took the opportunity to tackle this one because not everyone is at ease with the Puppet Master. I dream of uh, getting rid of that virtual machine, which is partially automated and managed. So it's a kind of Frankenstein. And, but right now, I didn't want to bother all of you on that part. Um, we had an issue with the VPN. The server side certificate for the VPN expired the 26th of February. Uh, sounds like both Olivia and I uh, missed to add an event to remind us a few days or weeks ago. Uh, we spent the day because we are also missing documentation on how to regenerate that certificate. It's very easy and well documented on, on to generate client side certificate, but not the server side. And the uh, attempts with the help of Stefan, we were able, both of us, to generate certificates, but like classical certificate as we will put on an Apache or Nginx server manually. Uh, but in fact, we, they, we were missing some specific OpenSSL uh, at extended attribute expected by OpenVPN. Thanks to Olivier, Olivier jumped on a call to help us. He pointed us to the, the location. So it, may, it seems like that it was not as easy as uh, he and us were thinking but we're able to make it success and it has been documented. So unless I missed something on the to-do list yesterday, don't hesitate, Hervé and Stefan, if you see anything missing on the new doc, I might have missed a little part, but now we are sure that we know how to do it. We have the low level commands. We can still improve the easy VPN Golang CLI to take care of that specific case, but that's one command different. And uh, I made sure that both Hervé and Stefan have the access to the secrets embedded and everything has been written. So sorry for the inconvenience to anyone impacted by that. It has been fixed and the calendar is now up to date with all the certificate to associated element for the VPN at least. 
at least all the ones we were able to get the date. Uh, also issue on trusted CI Jenkins IO. It, uh, that caused a delay on running update center, JSON updates, and repository permission updater that was in charge of setting correctly the correct credential on, uh, for the release for the contributors. Uh, it was two days of delayed uh, jobs. There were a queue of 40 builds waiting. Half were only GitHub reports, uh, infra reports. Let's see later. Uh, however, a user had issues. So you open an issue and we went to the root cause that trusted CI wasn't able to spawn virtual machine agent on Azure because the credential used for Azure was expired. That was the Monday of expiration. So uh, cleaned up, uh, you can see on the post incident below on the no meeting notes, uh, the credential was rotated, updated on trusted and everything went fine again. Rebooted the virtual machine to force the GVM to garbage collect the hard way. Uh, and the user confirmed that uh, his issue was resolved. Took less than uh, 40 minutes, so good one. About the expiration, self uh, team improvement. We tried, or at least uh, uh, I tried to fix my failure on the past months to add this expiration note. I'm sure we are missing some, so I'm already sorry in advance for the upcoming ones. But as a matter of fact, uh, we try, we should be strict, and I try to be strict myself on each time I see that kind of incident, I immediately had a notification on the team shared calendar with a link to the help desk issue. Uh, my notes are not always complete, but at least you have dots. You can connect the dots next time it happens if I'm not available or for myself. Um, it has been done at least for all the Azure credential used by Jenkins instance to spawn Azure container ACI or Azure virtual machines. Uh, I took the, op the opportunity to remove all the code valet, Air Tyler, and all black or that kind of pattern name application and all the Azure applications that were more than two year old with secrets that were expired since two years or more, which means this application weren't used, so let's close them. There are still one or two that I would like to audit correctly, but um, I made sure that there was no more expired credential for service principal applications. And we spend some time this morning to be sure that Stefan and Hervé have the same rights as I am. We need to finish that part on Azure portal. So they, one of them, so meaning not me with my full admin stack, uh, should be able to rotate the last credential that is sensitive on that area, which is infra CI is Azure Packer credential used to build a virtual machine with Packer. That one expires in two weeks. So calendar has been added with notification today. And the goal is uh, Hervé or Stefan uh, should be able to rotate the credential and update it for the sake of knowledge sharing and ensuring that they have the same uh, permission on Azure as I have. Did I miss something folks from the discussion this morning? No, oh, that's exactly that. Um, yeah, um... Yep, go ahead. Just we we noticed uh, we can't uh, uh, attribute a role to groups. Oh, we yeah. have to attribute role to member to user, since uh, attributing role to group and uh, allowing a group to be a uh, member to the relation between group and user instead of uh, user and role is possible only when you have a premium uh, Azure uh, directory subscription. Mm. But we, since we haven't uh, that many people uh, in this Azure directory, uh, I don't think it's really a problem. More manipulation, but not that much. And Damien also saw uh, Terraform uh, provider to deal with uh, Azure Directory. So we could 
have this uh, configuration as code too, someday. Seems that Terraform might be able to manage this part. Uh, and we enforced, enabled yeah. and enforced multi-factor authentication for any user that need to access the Azure portal. Because we, it was, we did it, yep, go ahead, Hervé. We discovered uh, by adding uh, MFA to my account, uh, I still was able to log in uh, with only my email and password. You have to uh, enforce uh, MFA. So it's the one taken in account. It's for the okay. MFA uh -huh. use. And so we should work. Uh, there, are, they have document, there are documentation on Microsoft Azure explaining uh, we use that to enforce it per user, which is the easiest and the safest. However, uh, we should enforce that globally, that everyone trying to connect to our portal should uh, must have a enforced MFA. Uh, the thing is, it's risky because we might risk to lock ourselves uh, us out if we are. So the documentation explain how to do it on a test subgroup of user before generalizing, but we wanted to do it step by step. At least right now, everyone is enforced. Maybe per user is fine, like we did, especially if uh, Terraform allows us to manage that part. Thanks for, for the reminder and the help. Um, next topic, Digital Ocean. Uh, Hervé, can I let you describe where we are, what, what has been done, what has to be done? Um... The implementation is done. Uh, the cluster is added to CI Jenkins Tatayo jobs uh, with the EKS uh, cluster on uh, AWS. Um, the, what we need to do is uh, to be able to measure cost. I'll have to ask uh, Kevin or Someone asked Digital Ocean why we don't see the billing page in our Jenkins, in our Jenkins account. Uh, there are some documentation uh, to be completed. And uh, for the sponsoring, we should add uh, a mention uh, on the sponsors page and uh, maybe, well, not maybe, but uh, make a blog post to announce it uh, more globally. I, I wrote uh, uh, the announce on uh, Jenkins CI uh, um, dev mailing list uh, yesterday. So, yeah, that should do it for digital ocean. Great job. Seems like that uh, the the cluster, first the cluster is eating a lot, especially when you have a build queue that suddenly goes in a wave of builds. So that means it works very well and transparently, at least from what we can see. Maybe some user don't think so, and in that case, please report it if there are any issue. Uh, second, just a reminder, uh, I don't know if everyone received the email from Digital Notion yesterday. Um, since we enabled the automatic patch upgrade for the cluster, they send us uh, yesterday an email, they say in seven days, that will be patch day. So our digital ascent cluster should be upgraded in six days now. Just a reminder. It's their own uh, Kubernetes version, not uh, the Kubernetes, uh, yeah. Yep. Their own patch on the, I don't know how to say the, it. The policy is almost the same as Azure, which is, as soon as they are, they have validated the patch version of Kubernetes, they put it on their own version. But sometimes they also um, uh, transplant back fixes on a more recent version if they can put it on the current one, especially for security issue, which is really, really practical. That's why it's enabled and it should not, 
show any outage unless something breaks seriously on their own. Uh, because uh, as I've pointed out, there is the surge, what is called the surge upgrade, meaning they start by allocating a bunch of machines on the new one, then they migrate our workflow and then they remove the old one. And we pay way less than what we really consume during the surge. We pay a bit more, but that, that's worth the non-outage effort. And if it doesn't work, we still have EKS handling the builds. So again, really great job on that part, Hervé, and thanks for that. So now time to write about it. <laughs> Not the easiest part, no. Um, is there any question or things that I, we forgot? Or things to do on digital sound? Okay. Um, Last week, we had a request from the security team to add Windows Agent on CERT.ci, which is a, an instance they used for security purpose, uh, not used for any release. That's their own CI. Uh, that instance is managed like trusted.ci and ci.g. Stefan helped and took the lead on that topic, so thanks a lot. Um, that topic uh, really went clearly out of this scope for numerous reasons. The first one is that we have no explanation, neither them or us are able to explain that. But as soon as the LTS up update was applied and the Jenkins instance restarted in the container, the markup clouds in the config XML was removed. So all their manually managed configuration was deleted. Um, I should have been more careful because Stefan asked me and I did that like a cowboy. So I'm sorry for that. I should have backed up to the config.xml. I did not expect it that to happen. So listen, learn for next time. Sorry for that. Um, and I, uh, the thing is we had to recreate the templates. So it went from add a new template to, oh, Maybe we should think on what was the previous setting based on uh, watching the old pi their pipelines and asking them questions. However, that was a good opportunity for Stefan and I to share knowledge on how the Puppet agent templates work. We were able to cover a lot of elements. So it was good for the team bonding and team knowledge sharing. And also it was a good opportunity thanks to a bunch of ideas that Stefan emitted to propose an let's say improvement on the way we manage labels and tools. Um, so there should be a formalization of um, uh, this proposal that should be applied to CI Jenkins IO if it's okay for the end user. But the idea will be to keep the dimension expressed through the agent labels to kernel related element, for instance, the operating system, Linux or Windows, the, the cloud, the kind, is it a virtual machine or a container? All of these elements are kernel related. The limit being Docker, Docker require a kernel most of the time. So Docker is on that area. And then for tools like the GDK, Maven, these tools can be installed quite easily. So they should be managed by default uh, by the tools on Jenkins, at least on CI Jenkins IO or the standard instances. What I say might not be applicable for infra CI. That's uh, uh, another topic. And we were able, thanks to what you showed me, Mark, a few weeks ago, to define a, a kind of logical pattern for the tools because we were blocked a few months earlier on how to say, depending on the kind of label operating system, um, how should we install these tools? Second point, um, I didn't know that we could not download the tool or just express a shell script and set some variable and that's all. With that new pattern, uh, the tools are trying to use the locally installed GDK because all of our Linux and Windows virtual machine templates provide free GDK, 8, 11, and 17. So why download a tool that we cannot control and check? 
the provenance during builds. It's lowest down, and in terms of security, it's not really nice. So instead, we try to use the local one. However, we could still use some fallbacks to download or to use other paths for the machines that are not managed by our template, such as the power PC machine, for instance. So convention, fallback system. And since we use Puppet templating or Elm templating, we can, in, we can cover all corner cases. And better, we duplicated thanks to the template GDK8 and GDK-8. So we could add added value for the end user if they do a typo on the GDK, that would still be covered with exactly the same definition. So we did that on a neuroscope, which is third CI. Based on that experience, we could clearly propose a new policy for CI Jenkins Sayo in the upcoming weeks. That would simplify our, uh, let's say, most of our cases, and it will be easier for end user. We could document that or automate documentation. So even though that things goes went quickly out of scope, it was clearly a great learning session, and it's a great opportunity to improve the CI service we provide for our contributors. And the security team agreed to upgrade their, their pipeline in accordance to use them. So that's cool. Yep. That's really cool. Less work for us. So sorry, security team, if we <laughs> hear that. <laughs> but they volunteered and told us that it's OK for them. They haven't started to use Windows Image, but yeah, I hope that will be useful for them. Thanks, Stefan, for the, the guidance and the leading that topic. Great work on that one. Well, I, Damien, I added some notes there about implied labels that where, where our duplication of JDK8 and JDK-8 could actually be resolved by the implied labels plugin that lets us say one label implies another. However, it's not configured as code with JCASC yet. And so oh, okay, uh, sorry. It, it, that gets in our way. I think the technique you used is the most configuration as code. So let's continue forward with that. I like it. Let me add also, uh, we could ease the automation of labels for agents with another plugin that you show me, Mark, which is the platform labeler that by default define labels with spaces, but could be used with dash like what we do. So it could generate the matrix and all the, the cases yeah, based on yeah. the properties from the agent themselves, which is really useful. Yeah, if we need it, the tool is, the, it is available, yeah. About, about uh, labels, I remember uh, Jesse uh, commented on somewhere uh, that uh, the Jenkins files of uh, the Jenkins repo could have this is um, Maven label renamed to Maven 8. So we yep. wouldn't have uh, the if else uh, in our shared pipeline to have the Maven only label and get Maven, Maven 8 everywhere. Yep. Let me add the comments from Jesse. Thanks for that reminder. I, I have it on my favorites because that's one I want to, to take. Um, the status right now is that we already have Maven 8 defined along Maven for the container. We need to check if it's also the case for the virtual machines. As soon as we have Maven 8 everywhere, oh, we don't? I saw that this morning and I was about to add it, add them. Okay. Okay, but not VM to do. Once it's done, that's a pipeline library change. That should be transparent for our end users. And after one week after changing the pipeline library in production, we can try to track the remaining jobs using the legacy Maven before deprecating it, and we can change them. Thanks, Array, for that reminder which makes sense because yeah, we might have Maven 17 soon enough. Uh, one word about infra reports uh, that has to be migrated from trusted to infra CI. So Hervé and I split the, the workload on that one. There are two matters. The most important one is the switch the GitHub bot user to GitHub app and fix the permission issues, which consequence is the issue 2788 
uh, raised by uh, by Raoul. Um, so we have to work on that part to avoid authenticating to Jenkins CI organization on GitHub with a technical user and use instead a GitHub app. Uh, so work in progress on that part. That means changing the way we retrieve the, the token. So that part is handled by RV currently. And on my side, I'm working on, since that job need to run regularly and trusted CI is facing peaks, uh, as recommended by Daniel, migrating that job to infra CI instead is better. That allows us to also gain some money because it can be long running for some parts so using pods on a virtually infinite capacity adapted to the right sizing on infra CI would help us and would unblock other builds and trust it. Uh, bump and bruises, I won't go into details unless uh, you want to discuss that, but we have reached a point where the containerless rootless IMG used to build Docker without Docker on Kubernetes uh, pods isn't working anymore. So either we change tool or thanks to the work that uh, Stefan did, we could switch totally to using a fully fledged Docker engine running on ephemeral virtual machine agents on infra CI. Because right now we have the same setup for infra CI, release CI, CIG, trusted, and now third CI. So let's use Docker, let's use a full feature and stop using having edge cases. And that part would unblock executing infra report on infra CI because it needs specific Docker images that we cannot build for now. It's uh, four past four. So is there any other priority topic for the rest? Uh, these are minor, so we can delay to next week unless they are impor yes, very important. The notification. Yes, notification can be, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, okay. Uh, not me, I'm not. Yeah. IPTable, it's done. I've closed the issues. I see okay. notification, the topic of Puppet agent, but it works. Thanks, Hervé. The missing piece was uh, the Puppet master, which is half automated, half manually managed. And we had to Puppet, uh, to run the Puppet agent on that machine. I have to drop. See you later, Mark. Oh, Thanks. The, the Docker image is uh, up in the up Docker two three seven. Sorry, three three seven. Mm. Nice. Thanks. Um, okay, I propose that we delay after that, but IRC is done. Delay to next week. If it's okay for you. Perfect. Okay, let me. I will say notifs. Let me stop recording. Stop sharing and we stop recording. Yeah.